Good morning. I'm Colonel Pat Miller, the installation commander for Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and the commander for the 88th Air Base Wing. First, let me say thanks uh, for being out here tonight uh, doing some coverage on the active shooter event here at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Uh, it's been a long night. The team's been working hard, but I'm happy to report uh, that no threat has been identified. Uh, the team swept the National Air and Space Intelligence Center which is roughly an 850,000 square foot complex, three stories high. Uh, that center, because of its mission, has a lot of secure spaces in there, which is why it took us a while to get through there. Uh, it's not a single master key that gets you into the door of the National Air and Space Intelligence Center. And so it took multiple folks to come in and unlock some uh, doors for our security forces to get through and sweep that area. But again, I'm happy to say uh, that after that sweep, we have found no threat and there were no injuries as a result of this event. And so I will back up and give you a little bit of a timeline on what that looked like. Uh, shortly after nine o'clock this evening, uh, two individuals approached the security desk inside the National Air and Space Intelligence Center and reported hearing one gunshot. So shortly after nine o'clock, two individuals approached the security desk and reported hearing one gunshot. At that point in time, uh, the security forces uh, member that was uh, manning that desk called into our base defense operations center and reported an active shooter event. That kicked off a lockdown for Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. A lockdown essentially means just that, the gates shut. You heard over and over again throughout the evening the giant voice going off announcing lockdown, 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 uh, and everything just kind of freezes in place. The reason we do that is we want to make sure that everybody kind of hunkers down. Uh, folks have trained for this. They know if you're in your house, uh, in a facility, you lock your doors, you get away from your windows, you close the blinds, uh, and you wait to hear the all clear. And that's exactly what happened. Folks inside the National Air and Space Intelligence Center tonight, there were, were roughly 100 folks that were working at the, at the time of the incident. Uh, those folks, same procedures. They are barricading themselves inside rooms, uh, locking doors, closing windows, doing all those types of things. Uh, and waiting for our security forces to come in and clear that facility. Several patrols responded to the National Air and Space Intelligence Center and began methodically clearing the facility room by room by room. Again, large facility, lots of secure spaces. It required some time to get access to all of those spaces. Uh, as we're clearing spaces and we identify some clear paths, uh, individuals are moved out of the facility uh, and we just continue to press forward. And so we got all individuals out of the National Air and Space Intelligence Center. Everybody is safe, no injuries. As you can imagine, in an event like this, your heart starts beating fast. Uh, you're wondering what's going on, lots of anxiety, lots of emotion. Uh, but I'm super proud of both the folks that had hunkered down uh, inside the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, as well as those defenders and first responders that got out there and swept to make sure everything, everybody was safe. That is the most important thing in an event like this the safety and protection of our teammates. And so threat exists or not, uh, this is a very real event, right? Two individuals reported hearing a shot and that kicks this all off. And so it's real until it's over. And so fortunately for us at the end of the night, uh, we did not identify a threat. Everybody got out safely uh, and we were wrapping things up uh, on scene with a secondary sweep uh, just to make sure nothing has been missed. I will stop there and just see if you have any questions. Colonel Muller, any indication at this point what might have led to these individuals thinking there was you know, gunshots? No, right, right now we don't have any indications. That'll be part of the follow-on investigation. Um, most likely tomorrow morning, there's lots of construction in the area. A lot of our facilities are old. It could have been a, it could, it could have been a number of things. So I don't want to speculate and, and, and anchor in on something, but it could have been a number of things that have made a sound uh, that would have caused somebody to believe that that was a gunshot. Uh, but at the end of the day, they thought they heard a gunshot. They did the right thing, what we were trained to do. If you hear a gunshot, you report that and kick off an active shooter event. Um, I mean, big picture, you're just happy no one's hurt. I mean, obviously there's a lot of hoopla for this, and but that, it's necessary safety precautions that had to get kicked into place, right? You just 
maybe hit on one more time that you're happy that no one was hurt and there actually wasn't a shooter here. Yeah, absolutely. Folks did the right thing, right? We train for this, we practice for this. As a matter of fact, just this past year, we had two separate active shooter exercises uh, to make sure that we knew whenever we got the call for something like this, our team was prepared to respond. And it's a great partnership. We work with our community partners, uh, first responders outside the gate, FBI, Office of Special Investigations, local municipalities, and you saw some of that in the parking lot here. Our teammates from throughout the community responded to our call. Fortunately, we didn't need them. It was a, it was a successful event where nobody was harmed at the end, and that's the best part about that. Uh, but to see that our training worked, People responded the way they were, were supposed to respond. Our mutual aid agreements came into play. The community was here to support us, and it was truly awesome. We can't thank our community partners enough uh, for the support that they provided us throughout this event. You said there were about 100 people who were working inside there at the time when this all started. Uh, how are the people who are working in there doing? Are they okay? Are they all gone, released? Yeah, th so, so they're still all on scene. Obviously, uh, you know, it's an emotional event because in the heat of the moment, uh, you believe, uh, and rightfully so, you believe this is going on around you. And so as you're hunkered down, locked into a room, uh, you're trying to think through, okay, what happens if uh, somebody comes through that door? How do I, uh, you know, uh, fight my way out if need to, barricade my way in uh, to maintain that safety? Uh, but uh, I imagine, uh, you know, the heart rates are starting to go down now. Uh, we've got no injuries out of this thing, uh, which is a good thing. Our first responders are on scene doing those assessments just in case. Uh, and we will always uh, follow up with the appropriate support uh, with chapel services, mental health, just in case anybody wants to talk through uh, this event, because it is a significant emotional event. And so even though the sweeps are done and we have not identified a threat, it does not mean that we are stopping to support uh, our teammates uh, that have gone through this. Hi. Uh, beyond that support, forgive me if you mentioned, uh, beyond that support for the mental health and whatnot, what, uh, is there anything else being investigated throughout the day tomorrow? Or are you still going to be looking into this? Yeah, I think the, the big thing we do, as, a, as is the case in any event that we go through, is we're going to do a hot wash. We're going to take a look at the event. Uh, we'll sit down again with the, the folks that reported the incident uh, just to understand what they heard so that we can figure out where that source might have come from. Uh, might have been a facility issue. Uh, lots of different things could have uh, happened in there. And so we do want to identify the source uh, that may have led them to believe that they heard a uh, gunshot uh, and then just walk through our uh, response. Uh, I think we had a great response. We had great support. Everything came uh, together. Uh, whenever we conducted that sweep, we stood up our crisis action team uh, as part of monitoring that response here on the installation. And so we'll walk through those two things as well, because there's always lessons learned that we can pick up from an event like this. And so we'll walk through the entire scenario uh, from beginning to end to see where we can grow, where we can get stronger, and where we can reinforce some of the things that uh, we did really well. You know, speaking of lessons learned, did 2018 teach you some lessons that you could apply in this situation from August of 2018 with the active shooter and the lockdown situation? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I did not have the privilege to be the commander in 2018, uh, but I did have the opportunity to review that report. And I will tell you uh, what we learned in that report from the 2018 uh, incident that happened at our medical center um, fed into the training that led us to be able to respond the way we responded today. Uh, and so we take those lessons learned, everything we've seen from there. We've strengthened our relationship with our uh, uh, partners in the surrounding community, worked on that communication, which was part of the uh, problem uh, in the 2018 side, uh, made sure we got everybody communicating together, talking together, uh, and walking through in a methodical fashion uh, with that response. Do you have anything else, Adam? Nope, yeah, I had one. Um, tomorrow's the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Of I know there's kind of a heightened awareness right now. Was the response to this at all a part of that kind of heightened awareness of, of that possible threat? No, I mean, uh, first, uh, I appreciate you recognizing, you know, September 11th, uh, coming up here tomorrow, uh, and uh, the 20th anniversary there, and that was a, a tragic day in our history for our nation. Um, lots of emotions come into play with that, uh, especially for our, you know, we've got men and women uh, that are serving as first responders or serving in our military that were not even born uh, on September 11th of 2001. 
uh, and and to uh, it, it is a good reminder for them of why their service is so important. And so, again, I can't say thank you enough to our first responders that are out there uh, that put their lives in the line each and every day uh, for something like this whenever it comes up. Um, whether this happens on September 10th, September 11th, or another day, the response doesn't change. Uh, our defenders, our first responders are trained to do this no matter when it occurs. Uh, it just happens that tomorrow is September 11th. And so, uh, yep, do you think about those types of things? Do you wonder as this active sh shooter scenario is playing out, um, is there a tie to something? There's lots of questions that go in the air. Uh, fortunately, this was a non-event for us. Uh, no threat was identified. Everybody was safe. Uh, and we're going to learn from this and get better from this. Uh, but, uh, yep, September 11th tomorrow, uh, I, it's just a day I'd ask everybody to kind of talk uh, talk to your families, talk to those uh, uh, teenagers that uh, have no idea what was going on and remind them uh, about that day, remind them about the importance of service and sacrifice and taking care of each other. Yep. Um, hi, I'm Carolina. Sorry if you can't see me with the light. Um, I wanted to ask about your search efforts. Did you guys use canine dogs? We thought we saw a helicopter. What was it kind of like inside the building? So. Um, from the, from the search effort standpoint, uh, whenever we get the call for an active shooter, uh, it, it's almost like an all hands on deck type of thing. So we've got multiple patrols uh, responding to the area. Uh, we're conducting an interior search as well as an exterior search at the same time. Uh, tonight's searches uh, did not involve our, uh, our uh, military working dogs uh, and uh, at least not one of our helicopters were in the air. Uh, so I'm not tracking uh, any uh, uh, aerial surveillance or drone surveillance going on. Uh, during that time. Um, so the outside team is looking around the facility because uh, as you can imagine if there was a threat and they were trying to flee uh, you want to make sure you're looking around that facility to make sure that uh, the, the threat is not hiding outside or trying to work their way away from that facility as well as you've got a team uh, multiple teams starting from one end of the facility and working their way to the other kind of systematically walking through that facility and like I said, as you can imagine, a large facility like the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, uh, 850,000 square feet overall on that campus, three different floors, uh, lots of secure spaces with locked doors. Uh, it took a while to get from one end to the other. Uh, and so with those locked doors that were in play, the first thing they wanted to focus on was common spaces. Let me identify and get through the hallways, the bathrooms, the cafeteria, uh, some of those common spaces, and then uh, get, a, get access to those secure spaces. Colonel, uh, are you confident that it, the initial report was was made in good faith, that it was was made in earnest? Yep, a absolutely. Um, in talking to the uh, the watch uh, the security forces uh, member that was on watch, uh, their their interaction with the uh, two members that reported hearing the gunshot, uh, the I post interviews as, as the security forces was doing the initial investigation, uh, talking to those members, uh, you know. When you're excited, when you're nervous, when you're, when you're anxious, it, it's hard to hide that stuff, yes, right? Uh, and all of the mannerisms, all of the tone, all the uh, actions that they were taking uh, gave all indications that this was a pure, you know, this was a true concern that they had, uh, that they heard gunshot, a gunshot and it needed to be reported. And what are the most important unanswered questions that you hope a follow on investigation addresses? Yep, uh, yeah, we will continue to look into this, kind of peel it back. Uh, we'll get a fresh set of eyes on it tomorrow, uh, bring everybody in after the uh, uh, kind of the energy level, that excitement is tampered down, uh, and uh, kind of get at, get out with a cool head sure. uh, just to make sure everything is uh, is as we thought it was tonight. No, no one was arrested or detained? No. Okay. Hey, again, I want to say thanks to you. Um, your reporting makes a difference. Whenever an active shooter event is going on and you can convey that out to the community, they know to stay away. That keeps our site or whatever site that is secure and safe. It keeps the community safe and it allows our first responders to do what they do best. And that is to secure that scene, identify and neutralize any threats that they exist. And so I appreciate what you do to keep our community safe, to keep our community informed. Uh, and to all our, our first responders out there, again, thanks for what you do. Uh, it's times like this 
uh, where you, uh, where the community realizes how valuable you are, how important you are. And so thanks to our community partners for being there for us. Uh, we will be there for you when you need